Hello, my name is Curtis and I'm part of the pre-sales team here at Esri UK. Today I will be showing you the latest mobile app brought to you by Esri, ArcGIS Field Maps. Available now for both iOS and Android, ArcGIS Field Maps is the one app you need to deploy for your mobile workforce. The aim of this video is to explain what Field Maps is, introduce the latest features such as smart forms and how to create them, give an overview of the app, and show you how you can include your field maps content within the rest of the ArcGIS system. So what is field maps? Field maps brings together the capabilities of some of Esri's current mobile apps such as Collector, Explorer and Tracker into a single unified app. Users who already use one or more of these apps should be able to pick up the new field maps app and get started with ease as the app's UI is very similar to its predecessors. This should hopefully simplify field deployments, reducing the number of apps being installed, configured and logged into. At present, the three main features of the app are the ability for any named users to view and explore your maps in read-only mode like you would have in the Explorer app, the ability to seamlessly collect and update data in the field as you would have in the Collector app, and the ability to track where you've been when working as you would have in the Tracker app. Along with the mobile app, Field Maps also has its own web app. From here, you can manage your maps, configure smart forms for data collection, and control your settings, which should enable field workers to log into their device and have everything ready for the task ahead. One of the key new features of the Field Maps app is the ability to create and edit smart forms. For those who have previously used the Collector app, smart forms add a lot more functionality and have the capability to streamline the field worker's experience. Like with Collector, the data collected in field maps is stored in the map. However, rather than simply having all of your fields editable, you can now create and customize a form using tools such as required fields, conditional visibility, and group fields. This should provide a more intuitive experience for those using the app in the field. Now let's take a look at the app in action. The example I'm going to show is that I'm an environmental health officer in the field wishing to see incidents such as illegal dumping and litter in an area, as well as having the ability to report new cases from the field. When opening the Field Maps app on iOS, you will find the menu page. And to open our app, we click most recent, and you will find an overview of the area where your data is located. So each dot here represents a, an incident. So for example, we can go in and explore more by selecting the legend. And we can see that each point, so for example, green is fly posting and blue is dog piling. And we can find more by each point by just simply clicking on them. So I select here. I can see it was created on the 27th of April. Uh, it's a piece of litter, confectionery wrapper. And if I select attached, I can see any attachments that have been added. So for example, here, there was a photo added. Another part of the Field Maps app, as we can explore, we can use things such as markup. So if I hit the menu, open markup, I can draw, for example, like so. Not perfect square, but I can do it by clicking this. And then I can drag that around. Uh, and then for the square, I can add a label. So for example, this is a litter hotspot. So I'll just say hotspot. Um, add some notes if I wanted to. A lot of litter. And then I can change the color. So since litter is yellow, I'm going to change the bottom right here. It's like yellow. Uh, and I can make it. Um, I can fill in the square as well, like so, to make it a little bit more obvious. Now, if I want to do share this, because at the moment the markup layer is stored only on my device, I can hit the share button in the bottom right. And here, I can either share the markup layer to the rest of my portal, or I can just share it as a screenshot image. To leave markup, I hit done. As you can see, it's, the square is there. But say if I wanted to collect a new feature, so for example, I've came across an incident uh, where I am. So I'm going to hit find my location. Blue dot represents me. I'm zoom right in. 
And to collect new data, I can either hold in uh, with my finger or hit the blue uh, add button in the bottom right. I can move the map around to get a little bit more accurate if I wish. I'm happy enough with where it is. And I can use um, my smart forms now to select the incident. I've set this smart form up so that depending on what I select for the incident type, then I will get certain different fields back. So for example, if I select abandoned vehicles, I get this group of vehicle registration, make and model and car. But if say it was litter and select that, I get a different one so I can select the different types of litter or say whether it's uh, smash glass or not. But for this example, I'm going to just use graffiti. My graffiti, there were no other options added. So all I want to do is add a description and I'm just going to say graffiti on the wall. I could take a photo if I wanted to, or I can use an attachment. Um, since I'm not there, I'm going to just choose a photo from my camera roll. Uh, excuse the dog, dog photos, select this. I can have a look to preview it before. Hit done, add, and there it's been added to it. Once we're happy with that, we hit submit at the top right. And we'll go out. The point is added, it's just below where the location is. The final um, part of the app is the uh, ability to track your location. So to enable tracking, you hit the accuracy uh, bar at the top, and we can hit track location and set for a duration. So maybe we only want it to work for eight hours during the shift, or we just have it that it has to be manually turned off. Other ways to launch tracking are to go out of the app on iOS and you hit quick smart tracking. Or if the user has an Apple Watch connected to their iOS device, there's an Apple Watch app that can uh, shortcut without even opening up the app on your phone. In order to see our, um, our tracks, we select the layers option here. And we can see, we can turn on our tracks that have been. We can also toggle on and off our markup layer. So if I go back out, and see our markup from earlier. I can turn that off and on, depending on what I want to see. And the same with tracks, we can go in options and say if we want to see things just from today or just from yesterday, for example, like so. We'll go in and see our tracks. We can see things, information like the direction of travel by the arrow. If this uh, color was a darker blue, then that would represent it was a driving uh, task. This was walking. I can select it and find more information at any point using, you can see the altitude of the time or the walking speed or the accuracy. Finally, just to note about um, tracks. So the users that are looking at it, they can only see tracks from their own tracks on their devices, but tracks from all users can be seen um, and access centrally by those with permissions. So that's a brief overview of the iOS app. Let's take a look at how it's created. The data starts out as a feature layer in our portal. In our example, we were using the point layer, but the Field Maps app also supports polygons and lines as well. In order to configure our data, we select the data tab, then select fields, and here we can create questions for our field workers by selecting add at the top. This creates a field for the field worker to complete. If we want to create predefined responses, then we select the field and then create a list. So if I go to description of items, I could create a list here. However, since for the description of items, we want the, the user to just fill that out on its own, We'll leave that blank for now. For other features such as types of litter and smashed glass, we already have our list of values created. Now that we've configured our fields, we can head to the Field Maps web app through the menu at the top of the page. This brings us to the home page of the Field Maps web app and it shows all of the maps which are currently visible on our mobile devices. It also offers the option to hide any maps that you don't wish to show on mobile. To do this, you select the tick box at the top right, right and then you can select hide in the field maps mobile. But we're not going to do that, so let's go in and show. 
how to create. So here is an overview of our demo map. And you can see that it's offline enabled and not shared with anyone else. But to create our smart forms, we can go into here, select form. This is, brings us to an overview. If any of the fields which are created in the feature layer hadn't been assigned, they'd be showing up on the right hand side of the tributes list. And I'd be able to drag them across into our form, just like as I can with a new group feature on the and make that. If I want to edit any of these points, I can just select them and say for this incident type, I want to make sure that our users uh, fill that out. So I've selected required, and that's why it shows with the asterisk beside it. I could also add a description, perhaps to give our users to uh, a little hint of how to fill it in. For our groups, I select one for litter and illegal dumping and for abandoned vehicles, because each one of these has several uh, fields which are related to that. For these to only show when the incident type is set as litter, we can use conditional visibility. This can be done added here and using Arcade, the ArcGIS language, we can set it so that it only shows up when the incident is set as litter. So once you're happy with your smart form being set up, you can hit save at the top right and move on to the next tab. This is the offline tab. I enable, you can enable offline mode. So if, for example, you're collecting data in an area with no signal, you can still collect without any issues and then just synchronize when you return to base. The settings tab shows some information which you can set up for all of the users of this map. So you can set things such as the minimum accuracy to make sure you can lower that down to centimeters or to anything you wish. You can set up GPS averaging, which can create a more accurate location by taking the average of several GPS points. And you can enable streaming, which allows you to accurately collect data when walking or moving. Other features such as photo upload size, so you don't have to, you can use actual size or smaller medium so you don't use as much data. And snapping so you can easily tag um, points onto existing locations. Finally, we have our sharing options which allow us to either share with just ourselves, the rest of our organization, or if you had a group, a smaller group set up within your organization, you could do, do that using uh, group sharing. Now that you've seen how the Field Maps app works and how it's set up using the web app and feature layers, we can now delve into how it can be used throughout the rest of the ArcGIS system. I've opened up our data in the brand new map viewer and I've enabled clustering in order to highlight areas with more incidents, such as down here. The new map viewer also allows us to edit and add data using smart forms. So to do this, I make sure that my layer is selected, I click Edit. And to edit feature, I can do this. Say, select this abandoned vehicle. And perhaps I've reassessed the uh, vehicle condition. I think it's poor, actually. So I just update that. And that will uh, show up in the rest of uh, on, on the data. Finally, to add a new feature, I just simply select Add. Use my uh, pointer. You can zoom in for find a location. Say, just there. Add those piece of dog filing and add, and as you can see, the point has been added to your map. From here, our data can be shared within the rest of the ArcGIS system. So we could say create a dashboard, a web application, or include the data in a story map to share with others. As we come to the end of today's session, I hope you now have a greater understanding of the Field Maps app and what it can do as an all-in-one mobile app for field workers. With the introduction of smart forms, field workers have a new method for collecting and editing non-spatial information about GIS features. If you already are using apps such as Collector, we would recommend making the switch to field maps soon, as while these apps are still in production, all new features are going to be released through field maps. Field maps will be bringing even more 
capability over the coming months with the introduction of both Workforce and Navigator planned for future releases. Other features that will be released soon include a more smart form capabilities and the ability to create your own maps within the Field Maps app itself.